The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike, the cigarette that tastes better. Light up, oh Lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go oh Lucky. It's light up time for the taste that you like. Light up, oh Lucky Strike. Relax. It's light up time. This is Don Wilson, friends. You know, any time at all that you want real smoking enjoyment is the time to light up a Lucky. Because a Lucky tastes better every time. And the reasons why are world famous. First of all, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And then that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that brings Lucky's naturally good-tasting tobacco to its peak of flavor. Tones it up to make it taste even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So right now, or any time it's light-up time for you, be happy, go lucky. Enjoy Lucky Strike, the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light-up time. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, yours truly, Don. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, many times in the past I've opened this program by taking you out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. But tonight, just for a change... Let's all go out to Mr. and Mrs. Bob Crosby's house on the edge of Beverly Hills. Many times, many times, I have wanted your kiss. Many times, many times. Oh, Bob, Bob. Yes, June? You've been in the den here for an hour. What are you doing? Well, just rehearsing some songs, dear. I'm thinking of making another personal appearance. Personal appearance? Where? Las Vegas. Oh, Bob, I wish you wouldn't. You remember what happened last time we were up there. You gambled every night and lost quite heavily. Oh, I know. Well, don't do it again. I miss the baby. <laughs> <laughs> but really, Bob, I'm serious. I wish you wouldn't play another personal appearance. Well, why not, dear? Well, you're so busy. You're on Mr. Benny's show every week. You play benefits. You make records. And you have your own TV show five days a week. You're never home anymore. Oh, June, you're exaggerating. Oh, Mother... Mother. Yes, dear. Can I go to the park and play ball? Certainly. Okay, I'll be back in time for dinner. Say, Mom. Yes, dear. Who's this guy, the plumber? <laughs> <laughs> He's your father. Well, certainly I'm your father. Don't you recognize me, Chris? I'm Steve. <laughs> Uh, you run along, Steve, and be home in time for dinner. I will. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Dad. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> now she's grown. You know, honey, I could have sworn he was Chris. Gosh, you know, June, I've been thinking about what you said, though, and... I think I'm going to forget about personal appearances and spend more time at home. Oh, Bob, I wish you would. I will, and not only that, I think... Why don't we have a dinner party here at home like we used to? Oh, that would be wonderful. How about next Saturday night? That's fine. I'll invite all the boys in my band and their wives, and, and you know what, June? I think we ought to invite Jack Benny, too. You do? Why, certainly. Oh, but, Bob, he's such an important man, and he's so busy. You, you can't call and invite him to dinner on such short notice. Well, I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> Bob, I think you're making a big mistake. Now, don't you worry, June. I've got an idea. Look, we'll change the date of our dinner to fit Jack's convenience. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Bob Crosby. Oh, hello, Bob. Say, Jack, June and I would like to invite you to our house for dinner, and, well, when would it be uh, possible for you to come? Oh, 7 o'clock, 7.15. <laughs> Seven thirty. In fact, I, I can be over right now. Well, we weren't thinking of tonight. We were thinking of some night this week. Which would be the most convenient? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Well, you skipped Thursday. Oh, I, I babysit that night. Oh. 
I used to do it for you, but you lost your kid in Las Vegas. <laughs> I know, I know. But, Jack, how about coming over for dinner Saturday night? Oh, so, oh, fine, Bob. Fine. Say, and after dinner, we can have some fun. You know, play gin or Scrabble. Oh, no, thank you, Jack. I'll never play Scrabble with you again after last Sunday's game. You're too tricky for me. I don't know how in the world you do it. Do what? Well, there are only two Y's in the game, and yet you made the word money 11 times. <laughs> Well, all right, we'll play something else. So long. See you Saturday. So long, Jack. Goodbye, Bob. Gee, it was nice of Bob to invite me over to his house for dinner. He's always doing things like that. Having people over for dinner, taking them out to nightclubs, having parties. He's so generous. He ought to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Rochester comes home for shopping, I better tell him I won't be home for dinner Saturday night. Gee, he's been at that market a long time. Coming, coming. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Come on in. Thanks. I wasn't expecting you today, Dennis. Anything wrong? No, I just wanted to ask you a favor. Could you lend me $10? $10? Yes, I, I guess so. What do you want it for? I want to get myself tattooed. <laughs> Tattooed? Why? Well, I was in the Navy during the war, and yet nobody will believe I was a sailor. <laughs> well, what are you going to have tattooed on you? My uniform. <laughs> well, that's about the... Si Look, kid, if you want something tattooed on you to show that you were in the Navy, why don't you have a life preserver or an anchor? Or wait a minute, how about the battleship Missouri? No, my mother has that. <laughs> Your mother has a battleship tattooed on her? When she wears a corset, it looks like it's sinking. <laughs> hey, say, wait a minute, kid. I've got a good idea. Why don't you do what I did when I was in the Navy? Have the American flag put on your arm. Gee, I didn't know you had the American flag on you. Yeah, I had it done the first day I joined the Navy. Wait, I'll roll up my sleeve and show it to you. See? See? Gee, only 13 stars. <laughs> yes, Dennis, only 13 stars, but not for the reason you think. I made the man stop because he was hurting me. Then why did he put them in a circle? <laughs> Dennis, I don't want to get into any more discussions with you. Now, I'll make you a proposition. Yeah, what? If I lend you the $10, will you let me hear the song you're going to do on next Sunday's program and leave immediately? Yes, sir. Okay, here's the $10. Let's hear it. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like being in love. There's a smile on my face. For the whole human race Why, it's almost like being in love All the music of life seems to be Like a bell that is ringing for me And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peal I would swear I was falling I could swear I was falling it's almost like being in love All the music of life seems to be Like a bell that is ringing for me And from the way that I feel When that bell starts to peal I would swear I was falling I could swear I was falling It's almost like being in love Dennis Day singing almost like being in love, and should sound swell on the program. Oh, thanks. Now go get yourself tattooed. Okay, Mr. Benny. You know, uh, you know what I think I'll do? I'll have them Dennis, tattoo. Look, a... You promised me if I lent you the ten dollars, you wouldn't say anything. You just go. Yes, sir. Okay, then go. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> you know that 
Dennis gets sillier and sillier every day. I don't know how I stood him all these years. But it's my own fault. I should have known when I first saw him there was something wrong with him. What other man wears a size three hat? <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I think... Mr. Bailey, I'm back from the market. Good. I'm in the kitchen putting the things away. I'll come in and help you. Hey, what took you so long, Rochester? Well, I had a lot of things to do. You know, I took all the hamburger out of the freezer, sold it, and bought 36 quarts of milk. Why'd you do that? Beef went up, milk went down. I'm playing the market. <laughs> Say, Rochester, what's this? A head of lettuce. How can this be lettuce? It's pure white. The fat is over. They're taking chlorophyll out of everything. <laughs> oh. By the way, Mr. Benny, are you going out tonight? No, I think I'll stay home and practice my violin. Your violin? Oh, boss, calm now. <laughs> I'll wait till you get out of the house. Meanwhile, I'm going in the den and read for a while. Okay. <coughs> Gee, I haven't read a book in a long time. Let's see what's here. Did you hear the book I haven't read? 100 Famous Poems. Gee, I haven't read poetry in a long time. I think I'll read this. <coughs> Let's see. See, they have some wonderful poems in this book. Charge of the Light Brigade, the Owatha, the Wreck of the Hesperus, Ganga Din. There was an old lady from... Whoops, somebody penciled that in. <laughs> oh, here's one of my favorite poems. I haven't read it in years. The Shooting of Dan McGrew. I think I'll read that. The Shooting of Dan McGrew by Robert W. Service. A bunch of the boys were whooping it up in the Malamute Saloon. The kid that handles the music box was hitting a jag time tune. <laughs> Hey, bartender. 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 Yeah? I want a drink of whiskey. Okay, how much whiskey do you want? About three fingers. Here you are. Ah. Give me another drink. How much this time? Oh, about four fingers. Okay. There you are. Four fingers of whiskey. You know, mister, you're the first man I ever saw drink out of a glove. <laughs> I always do. I'm the only man in Alaska that got a hangnail with a hangover. <laughs> oh, gone, I've been trapped in this saloon for eight days by that darn blizzard. How much longer do you think it'll last? I don't know. Well, I'm going to take a look outside and see how the weather is. it outside? Cloudy. <laughs> Look, bartender, being stuck in a place like this for eight days can drive a guy nuts. I gotta have a little excitement. Tell you what, I'll bet you five dollars I can shoot those three glasses off the top shelf in three shots. Five dollars says you can't. It's a bet. Stand back, everybody. There's one. There's two. You lost. No, I didn't. I've got $20 more that says you did. It's a bet. <laughs> that slow bullet has made me a fortune. Anybody else want a bet? 
Hey, you at the piano. Don't you know any other music? No, nah, he's ignorant. But those fur, uh, four fur trappers in the corner... <laughs> Those you must four... have had five fingers yourself. <laughs> I see those four fur trappers in the corner. They can sing some songs. Well, let's hear some. <laughs> okay, take it, fellas. Jet the plume ray la tête, light a lucky alouette. Jet the plume ray la tête, light a lucky alouette. Alouette, alouette, cigarette, cigarette. Ah, alouette, proper cigarette. Made a fine tobacco, ooh la la. Alouette, jet alouette. Wrote a letter to her dear papa. Here is what the letter say. Send more luckies right away. Son of a gun, but Eskimo, they smoke luckies too, you know. Eskimo. 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 Smoke, you know. Smoke, you know. Alouette. 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 Cigarette. Cigarette. They all like. They all like. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Oh, Alouette, Papa Cigarette. She is just as happy as can be. We so luckies made a fine tobacco. Living with the ice and snow, we're so very glad to know. She's as happy as can be. We said LSMFT. MFT. MFT. We agree. We agree. Eskimo. Eskimo. Smoke, you know. Smoke, you know. Alouette. Alouette. Cigarette. Cigarette. Say you like. Say you like. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. Ah, Alouette. Pop a cigarette. Cruise along in lots of Arctic nights. In the north, so many light of lockies. That's what makes him more than mine. Well, how'd you like the song? That was Say See Good. <laughs> Hey, look, mister, the blizzard is letting up. Yeah, well, I think I'll get going. Where's my partner? Hey, Wilson. Wilson. Here I am. Come on, we're going up north to find gold. Gold, do you hear me? Gold. Just a minute, partner. Don't risk your life out there in these icy wastes looking for gold. What is gold? You can't eat it. Can you drink it? Gold's only money. The money will only bring you unhappiness, misery, and sorrow. Do you mind repeating that? <laughs> Money will only bring you unhappiness, misery, and sorrow. This boy is not only fat, but he's stupid. <laughs> now, come on, let's get the dogs ready and the sled. We're going. mountains hemmed you in with a silence you could hear, with only the howl of a timber wolf, and you camp there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold. We're going mighty slow, Wilson, and it's all your fault. I took you on as a partner because I was a greenhorn. You told me you knew everything about the Yukon. You told me you knew how to handle these dog teams and sleds. Of course I do. What makes you think I don't? Well, I have a feeling the dog should be pulling the sleds and we should be riding. <laughs> I'm sure of it. And that cocker spaniel with the whip is murder. <laughs> that dog yells mush at me once more and is going to be trouble. Gee, I can't stand this no more. Three weeks we've been traveling through these frozen wastes. I hey, wish I... Wait a minute. Comes a man. An Eskimo. Oh, yeah. I'll go and talk to him. Won't do any good. These Eskimos don't talk in English. I know, but I talk Eskimo. I'll say hello to him. Hey, compare. <laughs> That's Eskimo? <laughs> Look, he's coming toward us. And he's carrying food. Yeah, maybe he'll give us some, blubber. <laughs> I mean, maybe he'll give us some blubber. <laughs> hey, he wants to talk to us. 
Oogie, oogie, wah, wah, maga, who, maga, he. What'd he say? What'd he say? He says his his name is a mighty hunter and he's chief of an Eskimo tribe. Oh. Ask him if he'll be our guide and lead us to the goal. Mugla, Mugliuka, Takara, Iglu. Marabu, Oogie, Gloob, Nagikuch, Tigra. Three of my riders must come from Bismo Beach or something. <laughs> nuggy, nuggy talking. He says he can't be a guide. He's got something else to do. Ask him what? Oogie Tula Nagarari. Takalugi Moogie Papoose Nangawawa. What'd he say? He's got to go to Las Vegas and pick up his kid. <laughs> Go on by ourselves. Goodbye, Eskimo. Goodbye, and don't forget dinner Saturday night. <laughs> Ow! Come on, let's go. <laughs> Mush! I'm pulling it! I'm pulling it! <laughs> Wait a minute, Wilson. Look. Look at the side of that mountain. We found it, a vein of pure gold. Do you hear me, Wilson? Look at it. Pure gold. Oh, boy, am I unhappy, miserable, and sorry. (laughs) Come on, Wilson. Let's dig that gold and go back to the saloon. Back of the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. Now, watching his luck was his light of love, the lady that's known as Lou. Went out of the night, which was 50 below, and into the din and glare. There stumbled a miner fresh from the creeks, dog dirty and loaded for bear. Okay, bartender. I struck it rich. Set up drinks for everybody. Does that include me, handsome? <laughs> it sure does, Lou. I came right back here after finding the gold just to see you. Well, the minute I heard you was coming, I hurried home and got into this new dress. You must have been in a hurry. (laughs) You didn't get all the way into it. (laughs) But, Lou, I got presents for you now that I'm rich. I've got diamonds and ermine fur, jewels, and a yacht for you. Oh, darling. Come here, honey. Kiss me. (laughs) Well, after that kiss, I won't need my dogs or my sled anymore. Why not? There ain't no more snow between here and the North Pole. (laughs) Give me another kiss, Lou. Sure, honey. I'll... Oh, wait a minute. Be careful. Here comes Dangerous Dan McGrew. Lou, come here a minute. Yes, Dan? Didn't I see you kissing this stranger a minute ago? Yes, you did. Hey, he sounds dangerous. (laughs) What about it? You know what I do to guys I catch kissing my gal? What? I cut off their heads and hang them up by their hair. Oh, I'll have to think of something different for you. (laughs) Oh, I ain't scared. Now, listen to me, Dan McGrew. Lou is my gal, and I'm taking her with me. Oh, no, you're not. Draw your gun. Don't, don't fight, boys, please. Get out of the way, Lou. I'm ready, Dan. Then I reached for my rod, and the lights went out, and two guns blazed in the dark. Then a woman screamed and the lights went up and two men lay stiff and stark. Bye, Stiff. So long, Stark. (laughs) Etched on his head and pumped full of lead was dangerous Dan McGrew while a man from the creeks lay clutched in the arms of the lady that's known as Lou. (laughs) 
Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, through carelessness, a fire could start. A fire that could claim your life and the lives of your children. Don't let it happen. Be on guard constantly against fire. Make sure every match, every cigarette is put out. Always check the ashtrays before leaving the house or retiring for the night. Observe all fire regulations. Remember, only you can prevent fires. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but right now, here's a suggestion for you. Light up, the lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. That's a grand idea, friends. Just lean back and light up a Lucky. Because every Lucky you light is sure to give you better taste. And here's why. First, Luckies are made of fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Light, mild, naturally good-tasting tobacco. And then that tobacco is toasted. It's toasted is the famous Lucky Strike process that tones up Lucky's naturally good-tasting tobacco bringing it to its peak of flavor so that it tastes even better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. So, friends, any time it's light-up time, be happy. Go lucky. Make your cigarette better-tasting Lucky Strike. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light-up time. A little late, so good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Tackerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Filter smokers, here's the true tobacco taste you've been looking for. Filter tip Tariton gives you all the full, rich flavor of Tariton's famous quality tobacco. And real filtration, too. Filter tip Tariton incorporates activated charcoal, renowned for its unusual powers of selective filtration and used far and wide to purify the air we breathe, the water and beverages we drink. Look for the red, white, and blue stripes on the package. They identify filter tip Tariton, the best in filtered smoking. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes.